you want to know more about making trees, why don't you stick around and watch this video and see how I did it on my in-scale model railroad, the Sayerhurst Secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Enscale. Welcome back. This is episode five in our scenery playlist and I'm gonna call this simply trees. So, you know, uh, getting started in this process, I know that I wanted to make my own trees. I, I, I kind of shied away from the commercially available uh, ready built trees. Um, and I looked at a couple different techniques, um, some older articles of Mono Rarator, some of the new products out. And I kind of started, uh, decided to start with the um, Scenic Express is super trees. So what are super trees? Um, super trees are a product that is marketed by Scenic Express. Um, on their website, they say that it's a distant cousin to sagebrush. Um, it's grown in the Arctic areas of Scandinavia and they import it. Um, they have a couple different uh, ways you can get it. Um, they have a, a pre-made kit. They sell them cut down for N scale or cut down for HO scale. Um, and then they also have refill kits so you can buy them with just more armatures. Um, so I decided that that was the product that I was going to try first. So I got my, uh, my kit, uh, had a little instruction sheet. I read through the instructions a couple times, kind of got the idea of, uh, you know, how to do it, uh, per their instructions. Then I went to their website and they had two videos. Uh, one was by Scotty Mason and one was by Dave Ferraria. Um, so they were just demonstrating how they did super trees. And so, you know, I kind of came up with a couple different ideas how I wanted to put mine together. So what I gathered um, is Scenic Express recommends that you pre-soak them uh, because they say they become more supple and uh, they're, they're less likely to break on the layout. But then Scotty and Dave, they kind of did two different styles of putting them together. And I couldn't tell in their videos if they were pre-soaking them or not. So um, when you watch this video coming up, I, I did a couple different things to, on the first batch just to try and see what I liked best. Uh, do I, what, I Painting the armatures, uh, Scotty Mason uh, said he liked painting them. Uh, Dave Ferrari, he didn't really paint his, he just left them the natural color. Then Scenic Express, they say when you go to put the flocking on, not to use um, any other glues, they recommend matte medium because it's the best for the armature, uh, the plant material. Um, but you watch Scotty Mason's video and he's using 3M spray on glue. So, you know, I kind of put it, tried a couple of different things. I didn't try the 3M spray glue and kind of came up with my ultimate way that I'm going to do them from now on. And uh, what I end up doing is pre soaking the armatures, let them dry overnight, painting them because I didn't like the natural look sticking out of the, the flocking material. Uh, I wanted to paint it so it looked more like a tree and it didn't stick out, so it blended more. Um, and then uh, using matte medium, soaking them again, putting on the flocking, and then spraying with matte medium. So uh, that's pretty much my process, and you'll see that develop through the video, and uh, you'll you'll get an idea at the end. So um, that's just to give you a little in intro into this uh, video. So why don't you go watch the video, see how we did it, and we'll come back and I'll uh, cover a few more points before we go. Okay, so the first thing I do is open the starter kit and remove all the armatures. Uh, per the instructions, they tell you to separate them and uh, get them prepared. Also, while I'm doing this, I take the time to remove any of the seed pods and any errant branches. I cut them off and just uh, make them look presentable and ready to go. Okay, so here I'm making up the solution to soak the armatures. I take two ounces of concentrated matte medium and add it to 18 ounces of water. That dilutes my matte medium down. Then I add, that makes two and a half cups. Then I add that to 15 cups of water to make the solution as per the instructions. Now all I'm doing is adding the armatures and soaking them for about 15 to 20 seconds. Then I hang them up on the line to dry. Some of the smaller armatures have the tendency to flip up and or they curl so I use another uh, clothespin to weight them down so that they hang down. Okay so after the armatures dry overnight I take them and put them in the spray booth and I'm spraying them with a gray-green primer and I'm also 
uh, paying particular attention to the trunks at the lower portion of the trees. So the starter kit gives you these plastic trays um, that's used to catch your flocking material so you don't waste it. Um, so I get my bench set up and what I do is I take the armatures and put them in the bucket at my feet there and let them soak for a good 30 seconds or more and then I shake the flocking material onto the armatures. When I'm adding the flocking material to the armatures I do it from the top down because you want the leaves on the top of the branches not on the bottom sides. After a little while I found it was just easier to take the flocking material and dump it into the trays and use my hand to drop it onto the armatures. It just used up all of the material that was laying in the tray. Once I add the flocking material, I just hang them upside down on the lines. Again, if the armatures are kind of curved, I'll use another clothespin to uh, try and straighten them out. Once I have all the armatures hung, uh, I go back with a spray bottle full of matte medium and just soak the flocking material so that it'll adhere to the armature. Um, you can see I ended up hanging a sheet because I was getting matte medium on the fascia. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're uh, setting up your workspace. So half of this group of armatures has been painted, the other one is not. And so immediately after finishing this batch, I could tell that painting them was worth the extra effort. So after all that experimenting with the first group, what I've decided now is I'm going to pre-soak them, let them dry, and then paint them and then flock them. Uh, so here I am getting started on the second group and uh, this will, after this is done, it will make a total of 60 trees. So once you get the hang of it, uh, you just get your work area all set up. Uh, as you can see, I moved out to the family room here because there was more floor space. Um, it's just a nice, uh, easy going process. I just had the music on and I was just uh, dunking them and hanging them up. And so now we're just going to let them hang and dry overnight and then the next day we'll get in the paint booth and start painting them. Okay, so on the second group I painted the, all the armatures. Uh, that brown color that you saw, those I did not pre-soak. I wanted to see how they came out. And in the end I made the determination that I like pre-soaking them. I think it does make them a little softer and a little more springy. Okay, so now we're going to get started uh, planting trees. We're working down here in Saraville. Um, all I'm using is an eighth inch drill bit in a drill press and I'm just drilling a hole, putting the armature in the hole and then using a little bit of quick uh, dry CA to hold it in place. So on this section I should have taken the time to paint that white um, plaster that was up on the backdrop or at least cover it with something. In the end it's partially obscured by the trees and the underbrush but it's still not as good as I wanted it to so it's just a lesson learned. I don't want to be breaking trees to actually try to cover it up so I'm just going to leave it the way it is.
So the one thing that I didn't give any consideration to uh, leading up to this point was was placement of trees. Uh, and it really wasn't until I started actually putting them in and realizing, oh, wait a minute, you know, people are going to be reaching over in this position or I have this stuff that's in this position or I don't want to block these cars. So that's why I put a lot of cars out there just so I could visualize, you know, people reaching over with uh, uncoupling tools to uncouple during an op session. And that's why certain areas where I think there should have been more trees, I kind of went with just a few trees. And that's just to make it more user friendly uh, for op sessions. The other thing when it comes to the trees, um, you know, this first batch was 20 trees and I thought that was going to be plenty until I started putting them in. Um, so keep that in mind when you're making trees, uh, almost double what you expect you're going to use because uh, those 20 trees went real fast in this little area here. So the one thing that I really wanted to simulate is when you come up to an area where it's wild and overgrown uh, with trees and shrubbery, um, you can't. There's that wall that you can't penetrate to get into the wooded areas, and that's because of sticker bushes and undergrowth. So I needed to find something to fill in underneath the trees. Um, I'm using a product by Creative Accents and pretty much what it is, it's like a filter material that they added a ground cover to. And it's really nice, you can cut it up into chunks, you can pull it out and stretch it. Uh, it really worked out really well. Here's a little overview of the work that we've completed. Okay, so here we are on the second day. The armatures that I painted have dried overnight and now I'm ready to start adding the flocking. So I've got a little more experience under my belt now and what I've determined is that putting the armatures in the matte medium and letting them soak longer than 30 seconds doesn't do any damage. Uh, I was always I was concerned that they would start falling apart or something. It actually helps. The more that it has soaked up, the more likely it is to adhere to it uh, on the first shot. So what I've done now is just grab big bunches and throw them in the matte medium and let them sit there and just pick through them as I go. So there's Caitlin, she's home from school. Uh, she's a lot older now than probably the last time you've seen her on video and uh, very curious, very inquisitive. Uh, she's really getting into the, uh, the trees, so she hangs around for a while. So inside this starter kit, I got these two sample packages of Super Leaf. It's a product by uh, Scenic Express, and I figured out, ah, let me give it a shot. And wow, talk about it. totally different. It's really nice. Uh, it almost makes the trees really good in the foreground, um, but use that one foot rule or two foot rule once they're like two feet or more away your eyes don't pick up on the detail of it and it almost is like it's not worth it so I think you know the background trees being the regular flocking is okay and then use this stuff up front for in scale it really makes a difference and as soon as it comes in focus you'll see it and there it is So I did about six or eight of the trees using this uh, super leaf and that was pretty much all I had. Um, it goes on uh, pretty thick and sticks pretty good. Uh, so you go through uh, that, those little packages fairly quickly.
So the same process as before, I just hang them up on the line and uh, the ones that are too small, I use the uh, another clothespin to um, weight them down and then uh, I'll hit them with some matte medium in a spray bottle and let them dry overnight. All right, some extra equipment that you can pick up to have around to help you make your trees. Um, wooden clothespins, uh, you can get those at Walmart, uh, $2 for 100 of them. Um, mixing pails with graduated marks on the side. Uh, I picked mine up at Lowe's in the paint section. Uh, aluminum foil trays, um, you can get those at like the five below. Uh, they use them for like steam lines for catering and stuff. Uh, that Those are help with the flocking material. There's plastic ones that uh, Scenic Express gives you. They, uh, they don't last very long. They're kind of inexpensive and they, they end up breaking. So the aluminum foil trays are a good alternative. Also get a couple blocks of the pink uh, project foam uh, and some skewers so you can poke holes in it. So you can, when your trees are all done, you put them in the pink foam and have trays of trees ready to go as you're working on the layout. Um, and, you mine's right off camera. I just pick one tree and plant it and keep on going. So we started planting the trees at the engine facility. Uh, my main goal here is to build a view block to block that hole where the entrance of the helix is. So I'm just working here with various trees to uh, construct a nice little break. Now I'm going to turn my attention to this little area over here. Uh, my goal is I want to blend the backdrop in. So I'm just going to work with a row of trees and start bringing it out because I want a divider between the road and the railroad right away. So because it's such a tight space in here, I figured that it might be easier to put the ground cover in first. Uh, so I just take that creative accents stuff and spread it out and tease it and I'm just going to fix it down with white glue and then I'll come back and plant the trees in it. All right, so now I'm going to shift my focus over to the coal thawing building. I want to put a couple trees in there and also by the roadway just to kind of blend that area in together. So I use these self-closing tweezers that um, Scenic Express gave you in the kit. And what I use them is kind of like a little clip to hold the tree upright while gl uh, the glue sets. Uh, pretty handy little tools. All right, so now I'm gonna work on the berm uh, leading up to the engine facility. I want to put some trees in here to kind of like just blend the scene in so it looks more unified. All 
So originally I envisioned this area that I'm working in here to have a huge stand of trees as a break. Uh, but then as I started working and thinking about them, like if you have all these trees here, it'll be hard to reach in the engine facility for any problems during op sessions. So, um, you know, that's where you have to look at your prototype photos and decide what's best for your model railroad. Uh, even though the prototype had a huge forested area there, it's really not good for operations. So I scaled back on it. And instead of using a lot of trees, I relied on the Creative Accents um, ground cover to kind of build it up and make it look a little more overgrown. So I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between these areas here and that's because I'm looking at the trees that are in the tray as I'm pulling them out and I'm like, oh well these will probably work better in this spot. So that's, that's the reason for this. So as you can see from watching me work with the super trees, they are uh, nice and flexible. Uh, they stand up well to handling while you're planting them. I did have some trees where the foliage wasn't totally soaked and it kind of fell off a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, generally, overall, it, they were good product to work with. So now that I got all the trees planted where I want them, now I'm going to go back with the uh, Creative Accents uh, material and just blend it all in and tie all these trees in to make them look like they belong, not like they're just trees stuck randomly uh, on the layout. So as you can see, the, uh, the Creative Accents material really brings everything together and helps me build that vision that I want on my layout. I uh, definitely think that it's a, it was a great addition to uh, putting the trees in. Okay, so there you go. That's how we did our trees. Um, so they're all planted. I'm extremely happy with the outcome. Love the way the layout is looking. Um, you know, a couple of points of topic that I want to talk about. Um, I touched upon it in the video. Um, you know, I had visions that I was going to have huge stands of trees, real dense. And then when I started looking at certain areas, I'm like, wait a minute, if you do that, you're going to block um, you know the sidings you're gonna block the industries you won't be able to do switching and you know I want this to be an operating layout um, you know maybe if you were building a rail fan type layout where you weren't concentrating so much on operations you know just go ahead and blow it out with a ton of trees and I think it'll look really nice so I kind of had to skirt that line of I wanted it to look realistic but then I wanted it to be operational friendly so um, that's why certain areas are a little look, may look a little skimpy, but then other areas are real heavy. So you kind of kind of make those decisions, and that's the, where you know making the sacrifices, uh, like we've talked about in previous videos. You got to know what you want, and you want you got to know how you want it to run, and you got to merge the two together. The other thing that I had in my mind is I know that from well just walking around. I mean, trees are easy. You don't have to go to your favorite railroad spot. You just got to go to the general area and just walk. Um, go out walking with Caitlin or my wife in the evening. I'm constantly looking at the, the foliage around in the trees. And one thing I did pick up and I noticed is, you know, when you have this stand of trees, think away from houses, because houses, the trees are more manicured. They don't grow wild. Um, in, the, in the areas, in the wooded areas, 
you get this like wall effect where it looks like an impenetrable wall of foliage. And that's because of the undergrowth, the, the sticker bushes, the, uh, the, the little shrubs, they grow up and they make this wall. So that's what I was trying to achieve. Um, down in Sayreville, at, because it was my first area working, I'm not particularly totally pleased with the way it came out. I, it, it gets the point across. I didn't really pick up on it until I did the area over at the engine house. And what it is, you have to control the height of the tree. And what happens is in Sayreville, I wasn't paying attention to it, but over here, I found that the trees were too tall where there was no branches. So what I ended up doing is cutting them down to sit lower. And once you did that, and then add that ground foliage in there, then it really achieved the look that I was looking for, and then I became happy. So as for the Sayreville area, I'll come back and tweak it. You know, uh, I'm just gonna let it sit for a little while and, and come back and revisit and um, be able to build it up a little more so I get that effect that I'm looking for. So variety of trees, I didn't really pay too many attentions of, oh, I need oak trees and I need maples here and I need pine trees here and stuff. I kind of just went with the general um, shape and I went with the general colors. Um, I made sure to make a lot of variety because there's tons of variety in nature. Uh, so I used uh, four different colors of flocking. You know, you get two in the kit, but I had, it's the same stuff that I used for the ground cover. So I just went and grabbed two more and I got two more colors. And then with two different color paints, you know, a brownish trunk or a reddish, uh, a brownish green trunk or a reddish brown trunk. And I got two different. So you, you end up with like eight different varieties uh, to look at. So uh, I think that's the key is variety, variety, variety. So flocking material, I talked about that in the video too. Um, you know, the, that super leaf material is phenomenal stuff. Really, really like it. Uh, I think I'm gonna buy a bunch more of it. However, because it is a little more pricey than the standard flocking uh, that you would use for the trees, um, I'm gonna concentrate that super leaf in the front. You know, I'm gonna use that two foot rule because two feet back from where you're standing, your eyes don't pick up on the detail of the super leaf. I, I actually did an experiment. There's a couple in the back there. And I, where I stand out here, I can't differentiate between the standard flocking and the super, tr super leaf. So I think that's another little trick that I'm gonna play with making the trees a little more detailed and more variety. So uh, think about doing it that way. I think um, it comes out. And I was worried that the super leaf was like, oh, this is probably for HO scalers. You know, it'll probably look bad. Actually, it looks really, really good in in-scale too. So um, definitely think about using that if you're doing in-scale and HO scale, yeah, that you're good too. I think there's no real difference in size uh, to the eye that you're gonna uh, affect your scale. So the kit gave me about 20 or so trees in, in that first batch and the second batch I just pulled out of this the refill box that I bought and that thing is just packed full. I mean, it's, it, I didn't even, I just took one little layer off the top and I still have a ton more to go. So I'll be using that, that material for a while and uh, really inexpensive. I think that extra box was maybe 40. The kit was like 40. So, you know, for 80 bucks, I got quite a few trees. Um, so I'm gonna use up the super trees uh, over the next couple sections. And uh, when we get uh, further down the line, I'm gonna look at using other materials because I know if you look back in old back issues of Model Railroader before Scenic Express was marketing this stuff, um, you know, they were using, you know, uh, sagebrush and uh, other types of materials to make trees. So I'm gonna, you know, think about doing that just to add a little more variety and stuff as we progress. So last little point, um, this is my disclaimer. Uh, I'm not being paid by uh, Scenic Express. I'm not getting any endorsements from them. I bought all the material myself. Um, I just really like their products. Uh, it, the stuff that I've gotten so far has been primo. Uh, it's been really, really good. So uh, don't think I keep saying uh, Scenic Express because I'm not getting paid for it. So um, take a look at their materials. Um, if you don't like them, you know, Woodland Scenics is another senior company. They're making good stuff too. Um, so that's my disclaimer. Okay. So that's all the points that I wanted to go over. Um, yeah, really happy with the trees. Uh, and now we're gonna progress. Uh, I think it's time to move on. Now, the, you know, I, there has been questions about, you know, there's, these scenes are not done. I'm moving on. What we're gonna do is a later, in a couple months, we're gonna come back and we'll do some detail videos. I'll show you putting in the details, the vehicles and the cars. Right now, it kind of looks like, you know, an apocalyptic scene because there's no people and there's only a few vehicles. But we will correct that in the coming months and I'll do another series of videos to show you how I do that scene by scene. I just wanna get the basic scenery done, 
get my feeling of how I want it set up and then we'll progress. Um, after this, uh, I got a bunch of just shop work I got to do. I got locomotives that need to be done and, and cars, lots and lots of freight cars that need to be weathered and renumbered and all that stuff. So I'm going to concentrate the next two weeks and doing all that, clear the bench off and uh, get my materials together to do our uh, area over in the next room that goes through the hole. And um, hoping to get that video out in the end of January. And uh, I, this, this video was actually kind of a bonus. I never expected this work to go this fast. It was just so much fun so enjoyable and relaxing and it just once you get your process down boom 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 it i flew through this so that's why this video is kind of you're getting like two videos this month and it's it, it just came out a lot quicker than i uh i expected so that's all i have for you this time um so if you're seeing this video for the first time please subscribe to our channel so we have tons of material like this coming up and if you haven't done so already go over and check out our facebook page and our instagram account I'm posting pictures every day of all this work. All this stuff was, everybody has already seen parts of it. So go check it out so you can watch us and you can see the albums and, and see how this, the whole scenes have progressed. And after this video, I'm going to go ahead and update my albums because I have a bunch more pictures of this area over here and uh, I'll get that up. So we'll see you next time. Central Joseph Conrail Thanks for watching. <laughs>